2009, we started an event called Aviation Fascination. Literally, we have a, an, an evening event once a month, and the folks at Falcon Field wanted us to have an evening event. And I thought, oh, we need, we need to do this right, and we need to make it big. And so we did, and it was well attended. We had probably 800 people. It was a community event, Boeing and MD and, um, oh gosh, Cessna. I mean, it was fun. We had, you know, a lot of people, a lot of families, and people came out just to see the aircraft and, and walk around and get to touch and feel things. And it's just grown every year. And then in 2019, our 10-year anniversary, we moved it to a, a new um, area at Falcon. And um, it was really well attended. Probably our, well, it was our biggest um, event that we had ever had. We had more um, ramp space. So we had more aircraft. We had, you know, our, our regular food and entertainment and that kind of thing. And then 2020 came, and with COVID, we really just, it, we couldn't do a live event because we know what people want to, and they want to walk around and see people and, and aircraft. And so we decided that what, what could we do in the place of a live event? We could tell our story. And we've got a great story between Falcon Field and Gateway, and we've got great businesses. So we decided to do an aviation fascination documentary and let our businesses be part of that and, and help tell the story of aviation and defense in Mesa. On the same day, July 16, 1941, Falcon Field and Williams Field held groundbreaking ceremonies. The then Southwest Airways opened airfields for contracted military pilot training around the Phoenix area. The airfields were dubbed Thunderbird. The British, who were set to train at the new field northeast of Mesa, balked at it also being named Thunderbird, stating, that may be your bird, but this is our field, and our bird is the Falcon. At Falcon Field, in support of the British pilot training, Boeing Heritage planes, the Boeing Stearman PT-17s, and the North American Aviation AT-6s were put through their paces, along with the Vaulty BT-13s. In 1948, the federal government deeded Falcon Field to the city of Mesa as a municipal airport. The city contracted daily operations through a private operator until 1968, when it took over operations. Falcon Field served as an anchor for the aerospace and defense industry, dating back to the early 1960s, with the presence of Rocket Power Incorporated and Tally Industries. Today, with two active runways and numerous aviation-related businesses, it has become a major economic engine for the city of Mesa. Williams Field was named to honor Charles Linton Williams, an Arizona-born pilot. First Lieutenant Williams perished when his aircraft crashed near Fort De Russy, Hawaii in 1927. Training of Williams' pilots was led by the 89th Army Air Force Base Unit, West Coast Training Center. Pilots trained on the Beach AT-10 Wichita, the Cessna AT-17 Bobcat, the Curtis Wright AT-9, the Lockheed RP-322, and eventually the Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress, graduating 608 officers for the B-17. While most of the Thunderbird airfields and Falcon saw reduced operation post-World War II, Williams Air Force Base was an active training base up until its closure in 1993. Following a base realignment and closure round, Williams Air Force Base officially closed on September 30, 1993. Interestingly, two men, who were Boy Scouts in 1941, had raised the first flag at Williams Field when it officially opened, were there to officially lower the flag at its closing 50 years later. The base officially reopened as Williams Gateway Airport in March 1994. In 2008, the name of the airport was changed to Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport has experienced year-over-year double-digit growth. Um, prior to the pandemic, we, we had our best year ever, serving 1.8 million passengers. Leisure travel, uh, we believe, is going to lead the way in the recovery. Uh, and so, as people are more comfortable flying here, um, here in 2021, 
we'll see those numbers come back. Allegiant really has uh, valued this this area. They they continue to add flights. We just added Houston, Santa Maria, California, uh, and so they will find new markets to go into and to serve. And we're confident that that uh, that that passenger growth is going to return here soon. One of the benefits of being a former Air Force base is that we have three very long 10,000 foot runways, which means that we can land any plane in the world, whether it be a Cessna 172 trainer, uh, a flight student learning how to fly, or the Antonov uh, cargo airplane or a 747 that's coming in here to pick up cargo. Uh, we land it all and they all use us. We're one of the, the most unique fleet mixes uh, of any airport in the country. We're currently constructing a brand new air traffic control tower, and that tower will allow us to expand our, uh, our traffic footprint and the types of aircraft that uh, can safely land and utilize the airspace here at Gateway Airport. We're one of the busier airports. Um, our air traffic controllers handle uh, upwards of 300,000 operations a year. Our airspace is, uh, you know, is utilized very well. We, we partner with Sky Harbor, obviously, because we share a lot of the same airspace. Uh, and we, we focus on making sure that, that our operations are safe and efficient. Gateway Airport's at the, at the confluence of two major highway systems, uh, the 24 and the 202. The 24 is going to continue to grow. Uh, we're, we're located in one of the fastest growing parts of the fastest growing county. Um, so, uh, you know, when, when you see that, that, that momentum growing, um, people have, have seen that and they want to locate here. So, uh, whether it be on airport or directly adjacent to the airport, we've seen hundreds of millions of dollars of investment just in the last year alone in new buildings, um, which we love because it brings jobs, it brings, uh, it brings people to the area, and uh, it, it brings economic development, and that's, that's key. Skybridge, Arizona is, uh, is, a, is a master development here located on the airport. It's 360 acres. Uh, they are uh, anticipated to uh, build out, employ you know, thousands of employees um, in, in all sorts of, between office and warehouse. Uh, one of the unique aspects of Skybridge, Arizona is the Unified Cargo Processing Program. And we are unique. We are the only inland airport in the entire country to offer uh, joint U.S. and Mexican cargo inspectors here at the airport. So you can, you can get your cargo uh, bound for Latin America or Mexico inspected here at the airport uh, in one single stop. It's, it's quick, it saves that, that exporting time, and that way you're not waiting uh, for customs clearance in Mexico. It really is a game changer when it comes to uh, exporting goods to uh, Mexico and, and beyond. 30 years ago, we were an Air Force base that was uh, on the verge of being closed down. And the community got together and decided that we were going to make this a special place, that we weren't just going to let it die off. And, and what we're seeing now are the fruits of those labors uh, three decades ago. Uh, we know that thousands of employees will continue to call Gateway Airport uh, the place where they work. We know that people will live in and around here. People will use this airport to travel out of, to visit family. Uh, to go on that vacation, and we're really excited about that. We're excited about the growth that we know uh, is, is still yet to come here at Gateway Airport, and we appreciate all of the partnerships that we have, uh, the community support that we have at this airport, and we know that uh, that is key to our success. Falcon Field was originally built in 1941. Actually, it opened prior to the United States entering World War II after Pearl Harbor. And the, the reason for building it was so that the British Royal Air Force could train their pilots over here, rather than in England, where the weather is often inclement. And so they selected places like Mesa, Arizona to come to so that they could train their pilots very quickly and then assign them to the various theaters that were going on during the war. And so Falcon got its start uh, there and we trained over 3,500 cadets uh, during World War II here. Some of those eventually were U.S. Army Air Corps pilots which eventually became the U.S. Air Force after the war. 
And so that is how we got our start, as a training base. The two original hangars that were built during World War II are still located here on the airport. They are on the National Register of Historic Places, and our goal is to obviously keep them up and running and in good condition. They're obviously over 75, almost 80 years old now. Both of those hangars are occupied by tenants, and so it's great to have them here because it really does help us remind ourselves about how Falcon Field got started. Here at Falcon Field, we have over 100 businesses located here on the airport itself that employ over 1,400 employees total. You include within that, our largest employer is, of course, MD Helicopters that manufactures their own helicopters for various types of operators, whether it's defense, whether it's uh, law enforcement. Uh, they are a huge producer of aircraft that go all over the world. And then, of course, across the street from us, we have Boeing, and that is the location where they design and construct the Apache helicopters. So that is a very large employer. And so what we find here, especially in the Falcon District, is that there are a lot of employers who um, may have some type of connection to either the airport or to specifically MD or to Boeing, and so it's attractive for them to be able to locate close to the airport and close to their customer. We've actually seen a lot of growth. Of course, we made it through the recession. Falcon Field itself is a department of the city of Mesa because Mesa owns the airport. We were able to get through the recession and retain our financially self-sustaining status. In other words, we generate revenues here at the airport from our tenants and users, and that is what is used to operate the airport. We don't get any revenues at all from the city's general fund. So if you don't use the airport, you don't pay for the airport. Now, having said that, we kept our financially self-sustaining status, and that continues to get better simply because we have seen so much interest in development here at the airport. We currently have a $68 million development of hangars that is going in on the north side of the airport, a variety of hangars that include large corporate hangars, uh, hangars for uh, aviation businesses. And so that's a big project that's taken up uh, quite a bit of land here at the airport. When we just recently did our master plan update, which is a plan that allows us to look forward 12 to 15 years and forecast what we anticipate seeing happen happening at the airport. And as part of that, this time around, we decided to do an economic benefit analysis to see just exactly how much Falcon Field does benefit the community economically. And we were quite surprised to see what the results were. It actually came back and Arizona State University conducted the, the study for us. Over $811 million a year is generated right here at the airport. And then when you add um, Boeing into that uh, scheme, then it, it adds up to over $6.8 billion a year that is contributed to our economy here. And that's a, that's a sizable number. So I think it's important to remember that our partnerships with other organizations here in Mesa are really critical for us. I mentioned Boeing earlier, but there's others. The, the Chamber of Commerce, Visit Mesa, Mesa Community College, Arizona State University, those are all very important partners that we have in order to um, attract people to Falcon Field, to attract people to Mesa, to um, assist our businesses here in Mesa to be successful. And um, we, we do several things with those organizations throughout the year, like Aviation Fascination to try to promote aviation. 
And I think that's important for us to all remember that we're all in this together. And this is a mutually beneficial situation for so many people here in Mesa. Seeking a location suitable for production, flight testing, and long-term growth, Hughes Helicopters Incorporated transitioned its business from California to the Arizona desert in the early 1980s. In 1983, the first production model, AH-64A Apache, rolled off the production line at the company's Mesa facility. McDonnell Douglas purchased Hughes Helicopters in 1984, and one month ahead of schedule, delivered the first Apache to the U.S. Army in January of that year. McDonnell Douglas merged with Boeing in the late 1990s, the same time MD's commercial helicopter business became the separate company we know today, MD Helicopters. MD Helicopters, it's uh, such an iconic company, right? With its roots with Howard Hughes aircraft all the way back to the, the late 1940s is kind of where the design uh, of our platforms originated. And it's, it, you know, the, it's not too far from where they are today. So part of the beauty of the platforms is its safety and simplicity, right? You know, the egg shape, the design, it's a very safe aircraft. Even if a mishap occurs, uh, the survivability is really, really good with the platform. And it's, uh, it's small, uh, yet sophisticated in, in a simple way. So, you know, we have a, a number of platforms that fall into a number of market channels that it's very aptly suited for. So on the military side, you know, we have our 530F Cayuse Warrior, the, the Task Force 160 uh, aircraft for the U.S. Army. It is really well suited for the, the part of the market where people aren't buying Apaches or don't need a large twin engine aircraft, but it's, it's very capable, its performance is outstanding, and it's great for international users who need a light attack scout aircraft. So it's, it's well suited on the military side. From a commercial perspective, we have a couple platforms, again, well suited to the aviation public safety arena, uh, which encompasses aviation law enforcement and public service and public public safety, as well as you know utility. Utility meaning construction, power line, uh, trees, agriculture, that that kind of thing. So on the on the smaller side, we have our 500 Echo. The 500 Echo is a great platform uh, for the utility construction market. It's used. As a matter of fact, it's one of our biggest commercial sectors that we service. You, know, you see these guys out flying with people on the skid, on the power lines, making repairs or cutting down trees or you know, just lifting construction material from one area to another, well suited for that. From an aviation public safety perspective, one of our largest uh, market channels is law enforcement. Right. So the, it, you know, what makes it a great platform in the light attack scout role ports right over to the law enforcement role. And so instead of outfitting it with weapons, you know, we have to you know, outfit it with, you know, flares and communications equipment that, that really the law enforcement community with its performance, its small rotor disc, its lightweight endurance it, it is just a phenomenal platform for the law enforcement community. So um, Medevac, just touching on Medevac. So not as much, uh, not, not our largest market channel, but we do have two great platforms for that. We, you know, we have the, M, you know, the MD600 Notar, tail, you know, no, no tail rotor platform, which is a great, a great platform for Medevac. And our other Notar platform, the 900, the 902 Explorer is out, it, 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 because of its cabin size and performance and the lack of vibration that you get without the tail rotor, it's a great Medevac aircraft. We really dominate uh, the international light attack scout market, uh, hands down. We wanna, we wanna continue to maintain our dominant position in that market and we're gonna, we're gonna do that strategically, tactically. We're gonna focus on marketing communications and we're gonna add resources so that we are able to cover a larger share of the international light attack scout market. So on the, mil on the commercial side, you know, the commercial market consisting of 
aviation public safety, as well as construction utility. We are really going to focus on, on taking market share in a market channel that we haven't really been terribly competitive with in the past. But we've come up with new dynamic pricing, we've, come, we've added uh, marketing resources and sales resources to go, go ahead and attack that, that commercial market segment. So maintain the dominant position in light attack scout military-wise and try to gain market share in the construction and utility market. Great company, great platform, great people. And part of the great people is our interface and an importance of the interface with the city. The city of Mesa has been great to us. And Falcon Field, who has been outstanding to us on, on this uh, property. So um, it's very important for us to maintain a great relationship and support the city and also Falcon Field. We, we deal with them on a regular basis. You know, we talk with them about expanding. We talk to them about new facilities. We have constant discussions with them. They're a great, I, I call them a partner as opposed to a landlord, right? They're a great partner uh, with us. And uh, I, I just, I can't see being anywhere else um, going forward. MD Helicopters, an iconic US made helicopter company. Great people, great product, great spirit, in a great area supported by the city of Mesa, Falcon Field, and um, innovative going forward. You know, I like to say it's, 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 not, your, it's not your father's MD anymore, right? So uh, look, look out for MD, we're going places. The success of improvised helicopter gunships in Vietnam led to the U.S. Army's decision to create an advanced attack helicopter. The Army requirements resulted in helicopter proposals from five established companies, including Hughes Helicopter. The Culver City, California facility, owned by Howard Hughes and the Hughes Aircraft Company, was the original home of the Hughes H-4 Hercules Spruce Goose and the early developer of the prototype YAH-64, which later became the AH-64 Apache. Operational deployments in the early 1990s validated the claims of the Apache's capabilities and effectiveness. In August of 1997, Boeing merged with McDonnell Douglas. Boeing began the 2000s celebrating the 25th anniversary of the first flight of an Apache prototype. Events of the world soon catapulted the AH-64 Apache into further duty following the attacks of September 11, 2001. Boeing and the U.S. Army signed a development and demonstration contract in 2006 for what would go on to become the AH-64E Apache Guardian. AH-64E models rolled off the production line for the first time in 2011. In March 2012, the Mesa site celebrated its 30th anniversary and dedicated Mesa's Veterans Wall of Honor, recognizing Boeing Mesa employees who serve and who have served in the U.S. military. One year out from the site's 40th anniversary, the facility reflects the breadth of activity across the company. The site developed the AH-6I and tests the Chinook. The site includes fabrication centers in composite, electrical, and metals that support defense, commercial airplanes, and space products. Additionally, the site includes support functions that focus on the entire enterprise around the globe each day from indirect supply chain, facilities and asset management, and global security operations. Boeing has been a major employer in Arizona for nearly 40 years and is proud to call Mesa its home. Boeing is proud to be a part of the Mesa community dating back to the early 1980s. Our over 4,300 Arizona employees at Boeing today represent the tens of thousands of employees that have worked for the Boeing Company and for our heritage companies, McDonnell Douglas and Hughes Helicopters, over the years. Our teammates support our allied missions across the globe, building the infamous attack helicopter H-64 and the H-6 Little Bird. We also support the critical flight test missions for our Chinook program, and we fabricate hundreds of parts supporting Boeing programs across the enterprise. On behalf of the Boeing Company, we are happy to have you here today and hear from two of our Boeing teammates and their career journeys.
So one of the great things about working here at Boeing and working the uh, military contract for the Apache is you're surrounded with, with other folks that uh, you knew in an earlier life in the military. Some you didn't know in the military, um, but nearly all the pilots were prior military uh, and, and Apache pilots. And it's just a very tight-knit group. Our work ethic and the way we, the way we do things, uh, you can see the ex-military in all of us. Very driven, uh, very, very focused. Uh, it makes for a very strong team and a, and a great day at work. Boeing Mesa is the home of the Apache, the AH-64 helicopter. And at this time, we actually have three types of Boeing aircraft, all helicopters, being tested here. We have the CH-47 Chinook, which is typically built in uh, Philadelphia. They've come out here to use the wonderful weather and airspace we have uh, to accomplish their testing. We also have the H-6 Little Bird. What you can expect to see in the airspace is, is always an Apache. Uh, the Apaches are all built and produced here and test flown here before sent to the customer. You'll also see Chinooks uh, flying around uh, as well as Little Birds. And in the future, there's other aircraft that we may uh, have flying out of Boeing Mesa. Uh, we never really know what the future is going to bring. There's some uh, competitive projects uh, we're working on for uh, other aircraft, uh, as well as continued testing for the Chinook and Little Bird. But the Apache is our mainstay. Uh, they're all built here and tested here, so the Apache will always be visible in this community. One of the best things about Boeing Mesa, uh, from a pilot's perspective, is the local airports and the airspace. What's really unique about our location is that we can take off out of Boeing, uh, right here at our own helipad, and we can be training or testing or doing anything else within mere minutes. It, it makes for uh, more efficient testing and training, uh, definitely saves money in terms of time and fuel and it's just a great, great system. Uh, the relationship we have with Falcon Field is so essential. We're actually located within their airspace, although we're not technically on airport property. And so it's really a unique thing uh, that we are at the airport, but we're really not on the airport. Williams Gateway is another great asset we have just down the road. We have used that in, you know, for extensive testing and training, uh, not to mention Boeing Seattle uh, will oftentimes have very large aircraft down using uh, Gateway. Uh, it also is a relationship that is just wonderful for us. In terms of testing it at Mesa Gateway, um, they have three very large runways, old, old Air Force Base, and those runways are absolutely perfect for some of the testing we do in both Chinook, Apache, and Little Bird. Just like Falcon Field, they have happily close down an entire runway for Boeing's use uh, and, and allow us to do all the testing we need on uh, a hard surface long runway like that. So great relationships with the uh, local airports and it really adds to Boeing's success. So far, my experience here at Boeing has been great. Um, as soon as I pretty much started here, I've had such a wonder, such a joy of people and people really walking alongside me. That's one thing I appreciate about Boeing is that you do build community once you get here. Uh, people who are connecting me to other engineers, you know, senior engineers to just have a conversation, even if it's just 15 minutes, um, allowing me to really get a foothold and really get an understanding of more what Boeing is about and the activities that they have going on. You know, there's so much about aviation that it's ever changing, almost like, you know, you think one project has ended, but there's another one popping up, right? So I would say I've enjoyed my experience here at Boeing. I'm still learning, I'm still relatively new, so I'm still getting my feet wet, but aviation definitely opens up the world. So my future goals now, as a technician, I'm enjoying it. I'm learning a lot about how to be detailed, how to keep safety first, how to 
really pay attention to what you're doing, how to just enjoy your work, but also be mindful of what you're doing at the same time. But my ultimate goal is to get into an engineering role. Um, I think my passion is, or I know my passion is human factors engineering. And with that, I would love to become a human factors engineer, which pretty much focuses on the person behind the technology. So if we're gonna build a plane or build a cockpit, it's like, what is, what is the pilot experiencing as they're flying this plane? future educational goal is to earn my PhD in human factors engineering just to make me you know that much more of an expert in my field um, and with that become a senior technical fellow which essentially they're the people who truly help to build the technology and give advice and guide new incoming technology into Boeing but on a human factor side. Here we work with the defense sector, but there's also commercial airplanes you can work with, uh, fighter jets, you can work with helicopters. So there's so many other vast areas that you can get yourself into within aviation. So it really does, it's another field that allows you to really broaden your expertise. So you're never bored. There's always something you can work on. You just have to ask. In Mesa, I, we're blessed to have all these, you know, not just aviation, but our defense contractors here, and um, they all work together very well um, for us to be kind of that um, central spot in the state for the makers, you know, where everybody is actually doing the creation of product is key. Um, it's, it's been a blessing for us to be part of that as the Chamber of Commerce and our Industry and Defense Council and to bring all of them together to work you know, hand in hand um, for not just Mesa but the state.